the metaverse. The metaverse. Metaverse. Everyone in tech is talking about these new virtual worlds where people will be able to do plenty of things. Work, learn, play, shop. But many years before them, a man had already created an online world that was also advertised as a place to work, play, learn, and shop. Second Life is in many ways the only kind of real metaverse sort of experience that yet exists, at least especially for grown-ups. That's Philip Rosedale, the founder of Second Life, and this is his avatar in the game. Yes, remember the world you'd enter from your Windows XP desktop in 2003? It had its own virtual economy, and some people even said they made millions of dollars trading in it. Over the years, interest in the platform waned, but Second Life now sees an opportunity to stage a comeback. Rosedale's returning to the world he created 13 years after leaving the company to be a strategic advisor. His plan is to improve the platform's experience without the use of VR headsets and to make it work better on smartphones. If you looked aspirationally at what people could do with a metaverse, Second Life uh, in many ways, is still the one to watch and even the one to beat. So we look at Second Life's vision and why its past struggles can serve as a lesson for virtual worlds of the future. Rosedale began developing Second Life in 1999 as he toured with how to escape his own reality and to see how far he could push his technical expertise. This is what an early version of the game looked like. I you know, certainly was looking, asking myself the question of whether I could just build a whole other world and disappear into it. Rosedale's goal was to make this virtual world, seen here in 2003, look as lifelike as possible, as well as being free from the limits of reality. Part of that was giving users the power to shape the digital realm. They immediately bought the land from underneath all the things we had built and tore them all down, you know, to create their own vision of what they wanted the place to be. The game's virtual economy, digital tokens called Linden Dollars that can be exchanged for US dollars, allows members to earn while playing the game. Some forge careers as virtual real estate barons. We're definitely pioneers at Second Life in identifying that that sort of right to take things you'd made with your hands, you know, in, in a virtual space and own them and sell them to other people freely. In 2007, Second Life had some 1 million active monthly users and even featured in television shows. In my Second Life, I was also a paper salesman. Absolutely everything was the same, except I could fly. But by 2019, Second Life reported it had lost a quarter of its monthly users. Re-entering the world today can help us understand why. It's complicated to use. Creating an avatar involves using sliders that can change the shape of each part of the body. Trying to change clothes requires multiple steps and brings you to a separate marketplace. It's also glitchy. In some areas, items take minutes to load, and it can be hard to find people to interact with. The, the, the interface is difficult. Tech giants like Meta, formerly known as Facebook, have shared visions of a metaverse operating in a completely new internet environment, allowing users to move assets between different networks. Second Life says this platform still has potential and is betting on an immediate refresh, starting with trying to streamline this interface and make it more accessible on smartphones. It currently doesn't have an official app in the Apple Store or Google Play. Second Life says one of its strengths is that its avatars offer more customization options than other competitors. For example, the gaming platform Roblox, which is also developing metaverse concepts, and Horizon by Meta. For Rosedale, continuing to enhance the already realistic figures is key for the platform to stand out. I like to focus on this idea of like, how do I wiggle my hands when I talk to you in the metaverse? You know, how do I, how do, how do we feel visually connected to each other? And I think that work can be done without VR headsets. While Meta has made VR and AR devices an integral part of its vision for the metaverse, the creator of Second Life believes webcams could be used to help simulate more authentic character movements. When it comes to audience, Second Life is not on the same scale as its competitors. Meta's Facebook, Instagram, and other services have 3.5 billion monthly users combined. And the two companies don't have the same resources either. Second Life has said it's investing millions in improving the platform. Meta said its initial spending on the project is around $10 billion. Second Life has survived over the years because of a smaller group of loyal members and says it makes money by taking a commission on the sales of their creations. 
The company said the total volume of sales and transactions in its virtual world was worth $650 million. While tech giants say the metaverse is set to be a massive global industry, Rosedale is skeptical that any company will be able to keep large audiences interested in these virtual platforms. Most of us who have a comfortable existence in our real bodies in the real world are going to still tend to prefer that. Virtual worlds are a choice that you have to make. And it's a very uh, substantial and considerate you know, choice. And it's not necessarily something that all of us are uh, going to want to do.